It is just that we should be grateful, not only to those with whose views we may agree, but also to those who have expressed more superficial views, for these also contributed something by developing before us the powers of thought. Should movies with smoking be given an R rating from the MPAA? This issue has risen due to the numerous studies linking the influence of smoking in movies to 10 to 14 year old children picking up the habit. Before coming to a conclusion on the dilemma, we researched both sides to have a better understanding of the bigger picture. First, we decided to look at what are the positions on this topic. To us, we feel that there are two main sides to this problem. One is to protect the most vulnerable of our society, the 10 to 14 year old age group, or do we protect the freedom of expression of the filmmakers and the production companies? To tackle this issue, we needed to decide what ethical principle we wanted to use. This ethical principle was going to give us a better grasp and a constructive and fair solution to this complicated situation. Without a doubt, we cannot look over the results of numerous studies that link teen smoking to on-screen depictions of cigarettes and cigars in mainstream films. Our goal is to make sure that our conclusion protects those who cannot protect themselves, children. However, we do not want to impede on the basic liberties of freedom of speech and expression. We decided to look at our issue through the eyes of the Bach model. The model was created by philosopher Cicely Bach. Cicely Bach, born December 2, 1934, is a Swedish-born philosopher and ethicist, the daughter of two Nobel Prize winners. She received a BA and MA in psychology from George Washington University in 1957 and 1958, and her PhD in philosophy from Harvard University in 1970. It tells us to answer three fundamental questions, and by doing so, it will give us insight and an ethical conclusion. Step number one is to consult your own conscience. You must always consider your own values and how the problem conflicts with your own values. Step number two is seek expert advice for alternatives. Experts include people that have dealt with the same problem before and know what to do. You should always try to think about different kinds of people that might be able to help. And step number three is discussing the problem with those involved. The decision seeker should always consider who will be affected, directly or indirectly, by the decision made. Whether the decision made will have positive or negative impact is also something that should be considered. While consulting our group conscience, we realized our first ethical obligation is to do no harm. However, we wondered whether outright censorship would create a stigma around smoking, making it more appealing to teens. We seeked expert advice through our ethics professor, Dr. Howard Good. We approached him with our preliminary hypothesis, which stressed the importance of freedom of speech and expression. However, he reminded us that we're dealing with 10 to 14 year old children, a vulnerable and captive audience. We decided to fulfill the requirements of step three by using stances of advocacy groups to suffice for actual discussion with the parties involved. The groups we chose are the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids on one side and the Directors Guild of America on the other. The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids calls on the movie industry to take significant steps on its own to reduce tobacco use in movies, especially in movies viewed by large numbers of young people. They also call on the MPAA to adopt a policy of requiring an R rating as part of its own voluntary code for new movies with smoking scenes as one mechanism for addressing this problem. While the Directors Guild of America has stated repeatedly that the Guild strongly believes that any legislative measure that infringes upon a director's right to make choices on the depiction of smoking is a violation of our freedom of expression protections in the United States Constitution. The Bach model helped us realize that what is most important is also the first rule of ethics, do no harm. Our duty as an ethical and moral society is to protect the most vulnerable of our society. We have decided that movies have a social responsibility to their audiences. However, we do not want to censor movies and filmmakers on what should and should not be allowed to be in the movies. That should be their discretion. We feel a constructive and fair conclusion is to use the principle known as the golden mean, a method created by the great philosopher Aristotle. The golden mean is used to find an ethical compromise between two extremes. One extreme is to make all movies with smoking rated R, and the other end of the spectrum is to do nothing and allow movies to continue as they always have. We decided that a fair and balanced compromise is to meet in the middle. A productive and beneficial conclusion is to place a public service announcement or a PSA before films with questionable behavior, which would help vulnerable audiences with context and show the downside of smoking in films and the reality smoking has on someone's life. Many movies already show some type of PSA before its presentation. So to us, this is in no way a punishment or extreme solution for the movie industry. Also, we feel that it is a reachable goal with a lasting impact on future generations. Filmmakers and health advocates do not need to be against each other on this issue.
With cooperation, we can successfully make films with memorable content and have an ethical and responsible foundation.